Everyone's future depends on the youth of rural America. By 1990, it had only just started to become clear to the residents of Tom's River the sinister actions taking place in their backyards and on their beaches. In 1952, the township of Tom's River provided many incentives for the Swiss company to begin construction of a chemical manufacturing plant on a parcel of land roughly the size of Hoboken, New Jersey. The main product of the Tom's River plant were dyes, specifically alaline dyes manufactured from coal tar byproducts. The method used to extract the dyes dates back to the 1800s and was extremely toxic. However, Sibagagi as a whole was a very big proponent in the pharmaceutical industry and was a worldwide player in the agricultural industry. This all came to a head on the evening of April 12th, 1984, when a pipe burst on the intersection of Vaughn and Bay Avenue in Tom's River. The residents complained of a heavy smell and the chemical plant was soon a suspect. Unbeknownst to the most Tom's River and more importantly seaside residents at the time, just 2,500 feet from where the waves were breaking on the shore on Ocean Ave in Orly Beach, Sibagagi had been pumping untreated wastewater as late as 1985 directly into the ocean. Nearly 2.5 million gallons were dumped from this pipeline daily. To put this in scale, the weekly discharge of this pipe was equal to about what the Sibagagi plant accumulated in the groundwater throughout its whole entirety of running. And the groundwater contamination, which is just a small percentage of what went out into the ocean, has taken decades to remediate. When the EPA announced the pipeline would be closing, it granted Sibagaygi the permits to pump its wastewater into the Berkeley Township's water treatment plant. Throughout the early 2000s, various quotes from different environmental protection agencies can be found discussing the creation of a Superfund site at the Berkeley Township Municipal Treatment Center. However, no evidence can be found in EPA archives. Though the story really starts on the Toms River. For 20 years prior to the construction of the ocean pipeline, Sigagagi had been dumping any contaminants it wasn't dumping into its own soil into the Toms River. One dumping site was within 1,500 feet of then Camp Albaconda. This camp is one of the best examples of the complete disregard Sibagagi had for human life. At one time, the camp could facilitate up to 250 guests. And as far as I can tell, there's no evidence that people were restricted from going into the water during the time contamination was ongoing. Bathroom. There's an account from a former Sibagagi employee where he states that coming back from college one summer, he went to one of his local swimming holes only to come out covered in purple foamy sludge. In the early 1950s, a man built this single cabin on the side of the Toms River and named it Albacondo, a mixture of all the women's names in his family. The man who built the cabin, however, never officially purchased the land, and eventually in the late 60s it came up for public auction. When the property did eventually come up for auction in the early 60s, the son of the now deceased man who built the cabins got into a fierce bidding war between him and an opposing buyer. During the bid, townspeople shouted over the opposing buyer's bid so they could not be heard, and the man got his father's property. Here, actually, now that this, this water over here is a little more stagnant. I can't say entirely for sure if it is like a byproduct of the contamination, but that like red tint there is kind of what I was talking about. And as you can see, there's um, an oily film over here.
The camp operated until 2005 without ever really making changes regarding the Sibagaygi contamination. This was one of the many oversights that led to the cancer clusters found across Tom's River. Before the cleanup and demolition of the site, there were seven reported drum dump sites, although I believe there to be more. These waste barrels were Sibagaygi's own waste as well as other companies' waste that they were contracted to get rid of. All the while, Tom's River enjoyed the position Siagagi had put it in as the fastest growing town in New Jersey. Throughout the 80s and 90s, childhood cancer cases began popping up all throughout Tom's River. More specifically, lymphocytic leukemia. This was an extremely aggressive form of cancer and was relatively rare for the time, and treatment was not available. Okay. Excuse me, please. Thank you. The headaches persist. The doctors want to stop treating him for cancer and take him off his chemotherapy. The family consents. Now he is taking massive doses of drugs to dull the pain. 100 milligrams of Demerol an hour, and a special mixture for cancer patients called the Brompton's Cocktail, a potent mixture of morphine, codeine, and cocaine. There were give or take 200 cases of childhood cancer relating directly to the contamination in Tom's River. The sources of contact were various drinking wells positioned around Tom's River pulling up from two main aquifers. Once again, unbeknownst to most Tom's River residents, however, Sibagagi had been performing experiments and releasing the gases from these experiments downwind from the plant at the early hours between 1 and 3 in the morning to not alert residents of what was going on. Those releasing the gas and those unfortunate enough to encounter the gas all reported having a red tint, and this was a completely sanctioned action by the EPA. With now a new source of mutagenic chemicals, Tom's River parents didn't know if they could trust their water or their air. September 24th, 1989. Shibagagi party at uh, High Point Park. At the same time, Siagagi employees enjoyed company parties with their own healthy children. Yeah. When we come back to modern times, however, the story that once seemed to be wrapped up and even had books written about it seems to be coming unraveled again. In the early 2000s, chemical company BASF acquired Sibagagi as a whole and interned the Toms River land in order to acquire patents filed in the late 80s. Just this year, BASF won a tax appeal against Toms River, where Toms River may have to pay up to $20 million in taxes BASF has been paying on the land, which it claims is completely useless. As recent as six days ago, it was announced that significant development is occurring at the site. There were claims that they were attempting to build a residential complex on the site, however these were unfounded. It is actually a 200 acre solar farm that is being built as this video is being made. However, even as recently as 2020, contaminated wells are still being found and it's possible there is still up to 250 different cancer causing chemicals still under the Tom's River aquifer. Information regarding the exact contaminants, where the contaminants came from, and if they are still here, are very fragmented across different sources. It seems BASF and the EPA very much want this to be over with. Somewhere or another, the EPA has been calling this site remediated since the 90s, which it clearly has not been. It should be noted the EPA allowed Sibagagi to run the ocean pipeline well into 1997, six years after it publicly announced the pipeline was closed. All of the reported dump sites have been cleaned up, and although, like I said, I believe there is more, there's many other possible sources of contamination that are being completely ignored and need to be looked at. It's taken four decades to clean up just half of what has been done at the Sibagagi plant, and the fact more wells are popping up contaminated is very troubling. It's very possible the true scale of what has been done to the drinking supply in Tom's River is still not fully understood.